Hello everyone, welcome to this uh, tutorial. Um, today we're going to be looking at the bouncing ball animation. Um, it's a pretty typical starting point for any animators. Um, it's a really good way to start, it teaches you a few nice things. And it's just a really fun way to make a simple animation that looks quite nice and doesn't take much time. Uh, I'm going to be using Maya, which I already have open. Um, if you want to follow along with Maya or Maya LT, um, you're probably going to get the most out of this. That's what all the resources I'm using will work with. But if you have any other 3D program, feel free to use that. Um, or if you just want to watch and then take it in and use it later, that's fine. Um, so the first thing we want to do is we want to get a ball rig. Um, a rig is basically um, a skeleton or a set of tools that allow you to manipulate an object or a character for animation. Um, so the one I'm going to be using um, is this Ultimate Ball Rig, which you can get on CG Meetup. Um, I'll put a link for that in the description. So if you just find it on this page and go to download, and then you can download it. Um, I had some issues downloading from here. I don't know why, because I've used it in the past. But if you have that, then try uh, Creative Crash. It's on here. I'll put a link for that as well. You will need to sign in, um, but it's all completely free. So no need to worry about that. You don't get any spam or anything. And it's a really good site just to have for cool stuff for animation in 3D. Um, so I've already downloaded that. Um, once you've downloaded it, just unzip it and then we want to open it. We want to go to Ultimate Ball and we want the Ultimate Ball Rig. And here it is. So I'm just going to quickly take you through some of the things that it does. So we've got the main control here. Um, it's a root control. This you know, does that kind of stuff. Um, and what you can do with this, which is really cool, is change the ball type. So you can have a checker ball, or you can have a football, or a golf ball, or whatever. I'm just going to have the simple one, because um, I think it looks nice for animation purposes. You don't want anything distracting you. And I'm going to make quite a cartoony animation, um, quite exaggerated. And it just looks better with something simple, I think. So we can set that. Uh, we've then got the main movement controller. So you can manipulate the object with this and move it around any way you like. And then we've got these, which are really cool. Um, the top and bottom, they do the same thing, as far as I'm aware. Um, they affect the squash and stretch. So squash and stretch is really important in animation. Uh, it allows you to show exaggeration, and um, it's quite realistic sometimes as well. Things do squash and stretch as they move. We're going to make it very unrealistic. Um, you won't see a ball do that in real life, but we're going to have something along those lines. Um, so that's what they do. The great thing about this rig as well is as you squash it, the ball stays flat on the ground or in the position it's in it doesn't the base doesn't move which is nice um, so yeah let's get started first thing I'm gonna do is set my frames down here just in this section here to 25 um, just double check yet my playback speed is 24 frames per second um, that's the standard for a lot of things uh, I mostly focus on game animation so my future tutorials will probably be 30 frames a second but just set it to 24 for now and we want 25 frames um, I will explain why when we get around to that, but the first thing we want to do is grab this movement controller and we want to start with this ball up in the air. So you can either move it to a place that you feel is nice or I'm just going to translate the Y and set it to 8. And then you just want to make sure you run the right uh, frame, press S to set a key, you'll get this little red line. And then we just want to go to frame 25, the last frame and press S on there as well and you want it the same as the start frame because we're going to have this looping um, which is one of the reasons we've got 25 frames even though we're only going to display 24 um, so what you want to do next is find the middle frame which is 12 if you think just ignore the 25th frame from now on mostly uh, we're going to set it to 12 I'm going to set this to 0 you can move it down yourself but if you set it to 0 you know it's in the right place and just make sure you press S um, because otherwise you'll move on the timeline and it'll delete that um, so yeah now we've got a ball going down and then going up it's very exciting we can play that not the greatest uh, of bouncing balls doesn't look very realistic or interesting but it's doing what we need it to do at least the basics of it um, so one thing I'm gonna do is usually you want the the ball falling and the ball going back up to be the same amount of time so the minute it is 12 frames going down 12 frames going up what I'm gonna do this is just personal preference, you don't have to follow me. So on frame, let's say 15, set it back to zero, set that key, so it hangs on the floor for a second. Now that looks a bit strange at the minute, because the ball just kind of stops. But when we implement a bit of squash and stretch, you will see why I've done this. 
So let's get started with that now, shall we? So what we're going to do, uh, let's just stick with the top one. So we're going to take one of the squash and stretch manipulators, press S to set it so by default at frame zero it's just the standard ball not squashed or stretched at all. Once again do the same on frame 25 and then what we want to do is on frame 12 which is where it's impacting the floor we want to set it to uh, let's say minus 0.6 I think looked quite nice. So that's quite squashed you want to set that and then what we also want to do is frame 14 not 15 14 the one before it starts bouncing back up again we want to set that to minus 0.8 so it's really squashed down and then let's see yeah so at the minute it falls looks a bit weird on the way down but it squashes as it hits the floor squashes a bit more as it goes down and then it'll start going back up so the next thing we want to do is as it's in the air we want it to really stretch out so the frame before it hits the floor we want to change this to I'd say 0.8 so it's really stretched out the reason we set it to the frame before it hits the floor is because that gives it some time as it falls and it's picking up momentum it's stretching out and then it squashes real quick so it squashes down it then squashes a bit more and then what we want to do is a few frames on I like to do Let's set it like that again so 0.8 again set that so it goes down real stretches out squashes down and then it starts to go back up the reason I let it uh, lie on the floor for a minute is just to emphasize that squashing stretch so it's really squashing down here and then it gives it a minute to kind of spring back so that frame springing back before it takes off and then really stretches out again and then back to the same as frame one so I'm gonna set that to 24 for a second uh, the reason we have it at 25 the final frame is because otherwise 20 uh, 0 and frame 24 being the same to kind of be a bit of a stutter because two frames are identical whereas you set it as 25 and then display 24 it tries to get to the point that 25 is at and then loops around to 0 if that makes sense and it just makes it a bit smoother so if we play that we've got this ball bouncing up and down it doesn't look amazing yet um, you can turn off if you go to show nerves curves you can sh turn off the um, the controllers but you know it's squashing and stretching it looks quite nice but it's still something missing it looks a bit rigid a bit off so we want to bring these back and then we want to select the movement controller and we want to bring up our graph editor or curve editor whatever you want to call it so if we go to windows uh, animation editors, graph editor, you get this lovely editor here that shows these things called curves. So if you press A it will zoom in on all the curves in the scene and this one here is what we want to deal with so if we just highlight that or select any bit of it right click and isolate it gets rid of the other curves so um, any other motion within the scene you're not going to mess with that by accident. So as you can see it's kind of falling here and then it's slowing down and then it's stopping and going back up there's not real really anything interesting about it and anything realistic about it and even with stylized animation you want some realism otherwise as you saw it just looks a bit off so what we want to do is select this key here and you see you get these little handles and if you move them it changes the curves so essentially what would happen here is as I've moved that, it's going to hang in the air a bit longer and fall quicker. But you are messing up this at the bottom. So what you want to do is, once you've got that selected, right click. You want to break the tangents. This means that the controllers are individual. So I can move this one and make it all crazy and whatever. And that one stays there. So what I want to do is move this. Actually, first thing I want to do is I will set it to linear. So that'll make it straight basically and that means it doesn't have any it has a real impact when it hits the floor so let's do that first let's do that on both so break tangents select this one set it to linear let's see how that looks so it already looks a bit nicer it's really 
hitting the ground with some force and then bouncing back up. It's got a real spring to it, but there's still something missing in my opinion. And that is it's hanging in the air, it's not hanging long enough. So if we then, uh, sorry, select down here, select this tangent again, if we just pull it out a bit, not too much, but just enough so you can see it hanging in the air before it really falls down. Same on this side roughly match them but it doesn't have to be perfect um, generally things look a bit nicer if they're not identical just because it looks a bit more natural nothing always moves the same so we will close that for now just turn off the curves see how that looks so there we have it we've got it falling uh, it's really hitting the floor and it's springing back up and hanging in the air for a minute so let's just go through that frame by frame so as it falls it picks up speed picking up momentum it's really stretching out and then all of a sudden hits the floor really squashes down it then takes the impact a bit squashes a bit more before springing back up and returning to that original position so although the fall time and then the up time aren't identical because I've got this bit in the middle where it really squashes down I just think it looks a bit nicer, a bit more interesting, and it just takes away that symmetry, which makes it look a bit boring. So that looks quite nice. Uh, I could almost say that's done, but there's something I don't like about it just kind of reaching this point in the air and looking very rigid all of a sudden. And that is, in my opinion, because it's going back to its default shape. And when something's moving, it's never in its standard form. That's nothing you can quote me on, but that's just what that's what I think. That's how I f think about animation generally. So, as it's gone back to this default position, it just looks really uninteresting all of a sudden. So I'm going to set it to minus 0.1, and then we'll set that. Do the same, frame 25. I'm going to set it to minus 0.1. Set that. Knock it back to 24 so we can view it, and that means it's not in its default shape. Yeah, it's not necessarily correct, but again, it's not incorrect. Um, it's not the most realistic thing, but in animation, you you want to break the boundaries. Um, if you don't know the 12 principles of animation, I'd look into them. I will do some videos on them soon. Um, and that really explains to you and gives you an insight into what you can do with animation that does break the boundaries of realism, but just makes it more interesting and enjoyable to watch. So if we play this, the ball bounces down, and it just in the air doesn't look as rigid anymore and because we've got that frame at frame 25 it's looping real nice and I just think that looks pretty sweet for what five ten minutes work so that is essentially the ball bouncing animation um, it is just bouncing up and down I may do a tutorial on it moving um, if not I will put a link to another guy who's done a similar one that's really good um, but thanks for watching hope you learned a lot if you feel there's anything you want to ask me, or if there's anything I've done wrong maybe, um, feel free to get in touch in the comments down below. Let me know. Uh, the best way to learn, one of the best ways to learn is to teach in my opinion, because you know people ask questions and start conversations and point out things that you may not have noticed. So feel free to hit me up and let me know. Um, hope this was helpful and I hope to see you in the next video.